What's up, scholars? This is Caden with Black Books Animated. Today, we're going to be doing a review of the book, The Rise and Fall of Marcus Garvey by Colin Grant. And we already know that you're going to love this review. So go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Marcus Garvey is known by many as the father of Pan-Africanism. While he made a huge impact in the area of Pan-Africanism, his work went mostly unnoticed in history until the Black Power Movement in the 1960s. Marcus Messiah Garvey Jr. was born on August 17, 1987. He was born to Marcus Messiah Garvey Sr. and Sarah Ann Richards. He was born into an upper-middle-class Jamaican family in St. Anne's Bay, but to the end of his father's life, his father lost most of their wealth, which caused a huge strain on the family and the family to split up. Garvey has always excelled at everything that he did. In 1905, he moved to Kingston, Jamaica and rose quickly through the ranks of the P.A. Benjamin Manufacturing Company, becoming the first Afro-Jamaican foreman. After laborers began to strike because of the unjust system, Garvey had an important decision to make because of his position. He had to determine whether to please his friends and be one of the black whites of Jamaica and be reasonably prosperous or come out openly and defend and help improve and protect the integrity of black millions that were suffering. He chose to suffer with his people. And while in Jamaica, he became a leading member in one of the trade unions. He later found employment after with a government printer company after having a difficult time finding work because of this unjust system. In 1916, Garvey moved to Harlem, New York, where he started the UNIA, the Universal Negro Improvement Association. The organization boasts 4 million members at its height, but it didn't start there. Garvey would have many apparent failures and setbacks before the organization finally took off. As a part of this organization, Garvey was elected the Provisional President of Africa. The title was meant to convey that Africans needed to be a country under one leader and liberated from the control of the white colonizers. He also looked for areas of solidarity with other groups, so he identified his movement with similar movements for liberation and a homeland that were taking place during this time, like the Irish and the Jews who were advocating for their own homelands. Garvey had many amazing accomplishments as leader of the UNIA. This social movement focused primarily on African advancements throughout the diaspora, specifically on economics and mental liberation. He was able to start the Black Star Line, which was a global shipping company. He also started the Universal Printing House, where he was able to give a picture of his side of the argument, and this paper would be delivered all across the diaspora. The British government and American government tried to ban these papers because it stirred up the black community too much. Garvey started Restaurant Cleaners and the Negro Factory Corporation. He had a knack for starting businesses and understood the importance of building an economic base and correcting the self-image of black people. Garvey had several adversaries during the height of his fame. Most notably was W.E.B. Du Bois. After the passing of Booker T. Washington, Du Bois had become the leading voice of black Americans. The Harvard-educated scholar believed in the higher education of a talented tent. This highly educated Ivy League Negro would be the one to lead Negroes to their promised land. Garvey did not fill Du Bois' bill of the talented tent. While Du Bois ignored Garvey for a while, this all began to change when Garvey started to grow in popularity. And to many, he became the new voice for all black people in America. Luckily for Du Bois, the American government, J. Edgar Hoover, and the British government wasn't a fan of Garvey. These four groups actively tried to discredit Garvey and his movement. In many ways, they were successful in destroying his movement. But this just goes to show how much they were scared of what Garvey was able to do and his progress in bringing black people together, not just in the USA, but all across the diaspora. He made some amazing accomplishments in a time where black people were still considered to be inhuman by many white folks. 
His ability to unify black people all across the diaspora is something that has not been matched till this very day. All right, family, thank you for watching. This is a brief review of the life of Marcus Garvey as portrayed in the book, A Negro with a Hat, The Rise and Fall of Marcus Garvey by Colin Grant. It is an amazing read, so I 100% recommend you pick up a copy. I will leave a link in the description below. And as I always say, love you and remember, live your best life.